name is Carl Testa. I'm here to introduce you to Sway, or more specifically, the version of Sway that I've written for the Monom Norns. Now, Sway is my interactive, live processing environment for any number of musicians. I use this system with my sextet and with ad hoc improvising ensembles. Uh, and what it does is it <clears throat> creates kind of a dynamic, constantly shifting electroacoustic environment around a group of musicians. The version for Monom Norns that I've written is right now just one channel. So it takes one channel in and it outputs stereo. Now when you first load it up, you'll see on the left hand side a list of processing types and on the right hand side a grid with a moving dot. Now that grid represents you or your audio input and this grid corresponds to the different processing types available here on the left hand side. So the center, see, center is silence, means no processing. One is delay, two is a granular synthesis, three is reverb, and four is amplitude modulation. You can see that the audio source just moved from quadrant three to the center. So what causes the audio source to move around that grid? If you click button two, that'll bring up the audio analysis menu or screen. Now, like I said, this is an analysis-driven live processing system. So audio analysis on your audio input determines the kinds of processing that happens. There's three values, amplitude, density, and clarity. X and Y is where you are in the grid, and this is the current type of processing happening. Now these analysis values are average values over the past 30 seconds. And these values determine where the audio input moves on this grid. The X axis is pitch clarity, how much, it's basically how often the computer can tell that there's a definite pitch in your signal. And the Y axis is density. And how many it's generating how many onsets are happening within a given time span and if you go into the uh, parameters menu you'll see thresholds amp threshold density threshold and clarity threshold so if the density is above the threshold that'll increase the y axis and if the clarity is above the clarity threshold, then that will increase on the x-axis. And the amplitude threshold determines whether um, you're moving outwards into the various quadrants or going into the center towards silence. Now in the parameters menu I've added a few additional options that help kind of experiment with the system and uh, figure out the, what the different possibilities are. So if you want to turn off the grid analysis altogether, you can do that here, grid analysis off. And now uh, your audio input will be frozen where it is. You can still change what kind of processing you want by navigating down here to processing type. So this is reverb, obviously. There's delay, amplitude modulation, freeze, pitch bend, filter, granular synthesis, another kind of granular synthesis, and cascading playback. Other processing types can be added to it, and it's pretty straightforward um, to add, add different types of processing, and I'll document that at some point in the future. The other options here are the fade time, which determines how long it's going to fade from one type of processing to the next. And then finally, the polarity relates to 
how the audio analysis controls the effects parameters. And it's really easy to hear its effect when, um, when using amplitude modulation, for example, because it's pretty simple. So if I go to amplitude modulation, I play a little bit on my bass. And you can reverse that relationship by switching polarity to on. Now, the quieter I play, the faster the modulation. Down here, there's the Evolver. And what the Evolver does is when analysis is turned on, when grid analysis is turned on, then after you've reached the time limit, this is in seconds, after you've stayed in one quadrant for over 100 seconds, the system will request that the processing change. So let's say you've been playing in amplitude modulation for 100 seconds. It'll say, okay, amplitude modulation is out. I'm going to grab a new type of processing. And while it does that, it also switches the polarity. You also have the ability to change the processing assignments in all the quadrants. So you can change this to your heart's content, to whatever you think it should be. And you can also change the center to be something other than no processing. If you want the uh, processing to stay the same and not change after it's reached the time limit, then you just turn off the evolver and then the processing will keep your uh, assignments. Let me know if there are any questions, comments. It's kind of a complicated system and I'd also love to improve the audio analysis, improve the audio processing. Maybe people have ideas for different kinds of audio processing that can be added to it. And I'm just kind of curious to see what people think, what the reaction is. So. Thanks for watching.